joint pain, brain fog, fatigue, dry eyes. Well, these sound like symptoms that could describe a myriad illnesses. But after ruling out other issues, certain patients are being diagnosed with BII, or breast implant illness. Let's welcome back Dr. J.P. Salibi, Medical Director at Carolina Holistic Medicine, with more on this autoimmune disease. It's good to have you back. Thank you. I have interviewed someone who suffers from BII. Um, it is, there's no real medical diagnosis for it, so it's hard to find out exactly what's wrong. Right, it's, it's classified as an autoimmune disorder, but when rheumatologists make the diagnosis, it's usually things like lupus or MS or ALS, one of the other 120 different autoimmune diseases that have a ICD-10 code. But really, we know that one of the etiologies for those that I just mentioned uh, is the implant itself. And who's most at risk as far as people who have had breast implants? Well, of course, women, because there are more women than men that have breast implants or any type, other types of implants. It could be a knee replacement because the same material, the silicones are in knee and hip replacements as well. Um, but the breast implant, uh, the silicone, even if it's saline filled, in other words, silicone shell with the saline liquid inside, uh, will cause an immune response. Now, it's interesting that women's immune systems are more at alert than men's probably because women carry children and they need to be better protected. So as, as we see with autoimmune disorders, more women are affected than men anyway. Mm -hmm. So you have that population, those are m mostly common to get implants, and then some of those that get the implants will have this reaction. I see. I'm surprised that they would continue to make the implants out of the same material because we were hearing during the 80s and 90s a lot of women were having their breast implants taken out because of the leakage of mm -hmm. the silicone and then replaced with saline which they all thought was going to be much safer but it's the shell that you're talking about and any other implant like you say that's made out of the same material so why are we still using the same materials if it does pose a risk? That's a good question. So with technological advances in materials, I mean, the silicons that are used today probably differ some from previous, but there's the anagenticity. In other words, it's the reaction the body takes on because anything we put that's foreign mm -hmm. in our bodies um, will cause our immune system to think it's something like a virus or a bacteria and want to fight it. Mm -hmm. And it'll develop antibodies towards it. And unlike other things, <clears throat> once you remove it, you're still fighting chemicals that remain in your system. The lady that I interviewed, she had taken hers out and she was still suffering from mm -hmm. many of the same symptoms. Mm -hmm. So how long do people have to wait for those symptoms to clear up? Yeah, so not only the chemicals, but the antibodies. So we have B cells as part of our immune system, and they have memory, and they'll have daughter cells, and those daughter cells will also have memory and produce those antibodies. Oh. So the problem is, is that it, the, the implants are no longer there to be attacked, but because of something called molecular mimicry, those antibodies will attack other tissues, like our cartilage, or our brain, or our thyroid. And, de and that's how you develop autoimmune, the body's fighting itself. So that can last for months to years. So just having an explant, having your implants removed doesn't mean an automatic fix. It could linger on for a couple of years. There's, there's an advocacy group in Charleston. There's a lady who had a BII and had an explant and she helps women understand how long it can take. It can take up to two years before you start two yeah, years? before you start feeling well do you, mm -hmm. do you start seeing improvements though all along so at least you can tell that there's light at the end of the tunnel sure okay there's ways to address the b cells mm -hmm. and have and kind of quiet them down things like the use of low dose naltrexone which we talked about in a previous show mm -hmm. and uh, t cell balance uh, formulas to help quiet that down any holistic approaches, because that, that is what you do, mm -hmm. that is your specialty, so mm -hmm. any holistic approaches to helping your body repair itself and to feel better any quicker than the two-year timeline? Sure, so folks with bad reactions, there's usually some other process going on. Vector-borne illness, heavy metal toxicity, something, mycotoxin illness. So identifying and treating those would be very helpful as well, but there are some natural herbals that we use, some detox pathways and protocols that we use to help expedite uh, the fix. And just being diligent about it. Right. And consistent. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Well, Dr. Salibi, thank you for that. Appreciate your help. All right. We're sure. back after this. Mm -hmm.